Hello and welcome to iCreate Evo. This video is part of my modifier series and will cover the use of the mask modifier. If you are into 3D modeling, animation and visual effects then consider subscribing. Let's get into this. Okay so this will be a first for iCreate Evo, we are going to delete the blender cube. I know this is highly unusual, but this is all in the name of progress. So let's start, select the cube and press X for delete. Confirm the delete action, I know it's hard, but it will be worth it. I think a text object would be the best way to show off the mask effect. Press Shift plus A for the add menu, then select the text object. Press R for rotation, then Z, then type 90 and press enter. Press R for rotation again, then Y and then type 90 and press enter. This should orientate the text to face you, if not then rotate the text object some more. To edit the text press the tab key to enter into edit mode. Press the delete key to remove the text, then type out whatever you like. I know I spelt subscribe wrong but I will correct this mistake later in the video. Let's adjust a property to make the text 3D. Select the text properties menu from the right side, looks like a letter A. Then click on the geometry section and adjust the extrude setting until you have the desired depth. Now adjust the camera position to get a better render of the text. Click on the camera icon and then the lock icon to allow you to move the camera with the viewport controls, pan, zoom and rotate. Also move the light to a better position and adjust the settings to suit your render. Add a material and change the color to whatever you like. Change into rendered view if your computer can handle it, don't worry if it can't. I used to make adjustments then render a single frame to see the result, I had to do this when I was starting out. Now I will correct the spelling mistake that I made earlier. Make sure you save your work. Then create an incremental save, this is so you can come back and change the text at a later date. You can create an incremental save by selecting file, then save incremental. This is because the next step will convert the text object into a mesh, foregoing the option to change the text. Make sure the text object is selected. Select object from the menu, then convert, then mesh. We have to create a vertex group for the mask modifier to work with. With the text selected, go to the data properties to the right, looks like a triangle. Click on the plus icon for the vertex groups. Rename the group to whatever you like, I went with the original name of vertex. Press tab to enter into edit mode. Press 1 for vertex selection. Then press A to select all vertex. With all of the vertex selected click on the assign button in the vertex groups menu. Now we can finally add the mask modifier. Select the wrench icon for the modifier properties menu. Click on the add modifier button then select generate then mask. Click in the vertex groups option in the mask modifier properties. Then select the vertex group you named earlier. You can check things have worked by moving the threshold from 0 to 1 and back, your text should disappear at 1. Now comes the magic to make the mask modifier look good. Click on object mode then select weight paint. Select gradient from the tool menu and make sure the weight option is set to 0. Go to the right side of the text and left click and drag a line to the left side. Your text should change to a mixture of colors. You again can check this has worked by changing the threshold from 0 to 1 and back. Your text should look animated as you raise and lower the threshold. If you find my content useful then please like, follow, share, and comment. Now we can animate the mask using keyframes. First off make the timeline window larger by hovering your mouse over the line between the viewport and timeline windows. When the cursor changes into a double arrow, left click and drag the line to make the timeline window larger. Now make sure the playhead is at frame 1. Click the keyframe icon next to the threshold amount. This will set a keyframe of 1 at frame 1. Drag the playhead to your desired position. If like me you make most of your animations on a 24 frames per second timeline, just type the frames per second, times by how many seconds you want the clip to run for, into the end frame amount. So I enter 24 times 4 which equals 96 frames giving me a 4 second render. With the playhead at the end frame of your animation, change the threshold to 0, then click on the keyframe icon next to the threshold value. Go ahead and play the animation to make sure everything is ok. Now I make some final adjustments and set the render and output settings. You can copy my settings from the video. This render is in Eevee. Don't forget to like, subscribe, 
and hit the bell icon to be notified of my new content. Thank you for watching. See you soon.